Good afternoon, yogis. Welcome to Lunchtime Yoga, one o'clock. Um, now, just a few things. Uh, we've got 15 minutes of mat based yoga, so this is a little bit more dynamic. But again, because it's so hot today, I thought we'd go quite gently into it um, and keep you cool, but obviously keep you stretched and supple as well. So, a nice practice to do on the mat. Um, then we've got meditation, we have a 10 minute break, we finish at 1.50, then we have meditation at 2, and that's just a shorter meditation today, about 12 minutes long, followed straight into the Q&A session, coffee, um, with everybody at 2.15, so yoga till 1.50, and then if you can stay around for meditation from 2 to about 12 past, um, 2, 12 minutes past, and then straight into um, Q&A coffee session, today at 2.15. So do hang around or rejoin us for the Q&A session. It'd be lovely to see you and have a chat. So what we're going to do, yogis, we're starting on our mats down here today. So make sure again you've got loose fitting clothing on, it's very warm. I've got two mats. Um, so if you've got another mat, that's great. If not, you'll need a rolled up towel for this. And what we're going to do is just stretch into the chest, open the chest. So what I've done is I've got my old mat here and then I've rolled up another yoga mat. If you haven't got a yoga mat, don't worry. Just grab an old towel and roll that up into a sort of tubular shape like this, okay? And then what we're going to do, I'll just give you a moment to get that. Um, just tell you a little bit about this. It's called opening yourself up. So it's a lovely warm day. So already hopefully our bodies are feeling more relaxed and warmer. And as I said, we're going to do some nice poses to try and dissolve some of the tension and tightness here in the shoulders. If you've been at the desk, if you've been doing a lot of driving, even if you've been doing a lot of gardening these last few days because of the warmer weather, and I know a lot of you have to do work at home, then these poses are going to just help remove some of the tightness in the upper body, whilst also working the lower half, okay? So we'll crack on. So hopefully that's given you a bit of time to go and roll the yoga mat up or roll a towel up if you don't have another yoga mat, okay? Into a sort of long cigar shape. And that's going to go at the top of my mat. And then if you can hopefully see, so this is known as corpse pose. And it's a pose that we're gonna do for about two or three minutes. It's a way of opening up the practice, but also getting a stretch. So I'm going to lie down and I place the mat just below my shoulder blades, just below my shoulder blades, yogis, okay? So I need to scoot up, move that block down. We did this before, and then my head, as you can see, resting comfortably. So I've got a bit of an arch going on, and then with my arms, I'm making this sort of cactus shape. So palms are facing up, bend the elbows, and get me this nice stretch, okay? And then Absolutely fine, you can have a cushion underneath your head if you wish to. I feel quite comfortable there. So just making sure that your rolled up yoga mat is just below your shoulder blades. And when you lie down, you can have a little fidget, make sure you're comfortable. If you can't bend the elbows like this, then take the arms along the floor, pretty much in a line with the shoulders. So you get this stretch, this nice soft stretch across the upper chest. I've let my legs just feel heavy. They're falling into the earth, falling away, the heels out, chin tucked in. And so this is known as the variation of Shavasana with the added bonus of opening up into the chest. We're opening ourselves up today and we're gonna close the eyes and just enjoy a couple of minutes here, maybe two minutes at the very most. We've probably had a minute already. Make sure that your head feels comfortable. So yogis, if it doesn't, do grab a cushion, place that underneath the head, if the head is feeling any discomfort there. And chin tucked in slowly, but what we're going for is this chest opening here. And that's why I've got this extra roll underneath the shoulder blades, just below the shoulder blades. Cactus-like shape with the arms, all the arms can be straight, and if that's too strong, have them here. As long as we're getting this nice opening in the chest, that's what we want to receive and entail. So, nice deep breaths here. The whole pose is about softening into the earth, the back of the body. And I'd like you to stay here for eight more slow breaths. It doesn't feel much of a pose, but 
Again, great way to open up into the chest area. Let the heels just fall away. Let the legs drop into the earth. Heavy legs, let them go. And of course, creating this arch in the low back, which is this area here. And if you can, holding that for at least another five slow breaths in your own time. Let's enjoy another deep breath in and out, yogis, at your pace, no rush. And then we're going to bring the feet together, yogis, feet and legs together. And from here, go into a supported pose that's going to work the abdominal. So a little bit like a sit up. So I've brought my feet together, I flex the toes towards me. I'm carefully going to interlace my fingers behind my head, elbows out to the side, keeping them open, and I come up. And then we're going to pulse. We're going to inhale as we look up. Exhale, we go down. Inhale, we come up. Work in the abdominals, the frontal abdominals, this area. Exhale, down. And we do 10 of those slowly, breathing in. So I'm using the support, whether it's a towel or a yoga mat, to help me go into a nice flow with these very gentle sit-ups, very supported. So we inhale, try and keep the elbows open. Exhale, we control, we come down. Keep going, yogis. Breathing in as you come up, flexing the toes towards you, look towards the toes. Exhale as we go down. And let's continue. We'll do about 30 more seconds. So about a minute, minute and a half of these if you can. Slow it down if you need to. Inhale, we come up. Exhale, we go down. And interlacing the fingers behind the head so the back of the head is supported. Three more. Inhale. Exhale. Stop if you need to. Breathing in. See how slow and smooth that whole exercise is. You can do as many as you wish to. That's the last one. Release the hands carefully and then just bend the knees for extra support. Roll over onto one side so you come up to sitting. Well done. And again, taking the mat just to one side, the rolled up mat, because we won't need that just yet. We're going to come on to all fours now, yogis, and practice some cat cows to warm our spines up. So, making sure. As we've rolled onto the side, we've come onto all fours. And on an inhalation, we stretch the heart and tailbone away from one another. And what I'm doing as I do this is I'm lifting my head slightly. On an exhalation, I'm rounding the spine, I'm contracting the abdominal wall, letting the head and tailbone curl in. Then I go again, repeating. Ten cycles of the breath. Lifting my head, stretching the head and tailbone away from each other. Exhale, I contract my abdominal wall and I round my spine. So we're going to do eight more. We do ten cycles of breath all together. Slowly, I exhale, rounding the spine. As I inhale, stretching the heart and the tailbone away from one another, looking slightly ahead. And then exhale again, letting the head and the, tail, the tailbone almost curl inwards here. And it needs to be slow because even though it's very warm outside, we want to just slowly feel the effects of these poses. And the slower we do them, the more likely we're going to feel the effects of the stretch. We want to 
almost integrate this softness with the strength of the back muscles. So this practice is called opening yourself up. It relaxes the neck and it promotes good upper back health. Okay. Good upper back health. Not an area we often go into. Move with the pulse of the breath throughout the sequence. And we're engaging the muscles of our back body here while retaining that nice, almost receptivity and softness of the tongue. Now, we're going to do some back bends, so that's why we're going slowly, but let's just do one more cycle of the breath together. This will help to strengthen the back muscles and enjoy hopefully bending a little deeper into some back bends and to stillness. Now we're in a great place just to go straight into a downward dog. And bearing in mind that it's very warm today, just go into this gently and softly. And if you find that it feels too much because it's warm or you feel any sort of dizziness or any discomfort, then you're going to come down. Because we're going to practice our downward dog at least twice in this uh, sequence, okay? So, from all fours, yogis, tuck the toes under. We're going to lift our hips up and back into downward dogs, okay? So here we go. Up we come, we push the hands firmly into the floor. Our knees might be bent, that's absolutely fine because first of all, we're going to spread the weight across the fingers and the hands, and then we can focus on lifting the hips up and back. Let's walk the dog. We're gonna pad one heel back and down as we breathe in. The other heel as we breathe out, back and down. It's almost called, and you can imagine walking the dog one foot up, one foot down with the breath, inhale, exhaling. Arms are strong, we gaze towards our thighs if we can, or the knees if that's more comfortable for the neck, and we breathe. So this is that first inversion. It will feel rather strong, so I don't want anybody to stay in this position any longer than they can comfortably. I'm going to suggest five more slow breaths. You can, of course, do just one or two and then come back onto all fours if needed. Okay, so staying here for up to five more deep breaths, or again, coming back onto all fours if needed. All right, the main thing is that you're not straining, you're simply doing as many deep breaths as you can. So, from here, yogis, we exhale when we're ready and we come back down. And of course, some of you will have come down before then, and that's fine because it's about giving yourself permission to do as much or as little of this practice as you want. It is your yoga. So, we're going to come onto the front of our bodies now. Pujangasana, known as the Cobra Pose. Hopefully, you can see me. We're going to do what's known as a low variation. Again, just being mindful it's warm, we're going to do a low variation. But what's lovely is it helps to strengthen our back muscles. And also enjoy just going a little deeper into those back bends and often the things we might not want to do. So we'll take it care. So from downward dog, we're lying on our belly. We firm our legs, we press the tops of the feet down, yogis. We lengthen the tailbone back towards the feet. We press and place our hands near the bottom ribs. So think about where the bottom ribs are and that's where you place your hands. And we want to inhale and almost coil our spine inwards, because we're going to lift our chest forwards and up on an inhalation. You can see I'm trying to keep the elbows close. Exhale, I slowly roll down. We do that 10 times pulsing. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, slowly roll down. Keep those elbows where they are. Press the front of the feet and the thighs into the floor. Exhaling down, you can see I'm pulsing. Four more if you can. Inhale, coming up, not very far. Exhaling down. And every time you come up, you're pressing palms into the floor, keeping the elbows close to the body, slowly rolling down. So this prepares us and slowly opens the back muscles. Breathing in, don't come up too high. Breathing out once more if you can, slowly. Inhale. Exhale, slowly roll down. Curl the toes under. 
we release and lift back into downward dog onto all fours and up we come back into our downward dog let's take a moment to open the fingers spread the weight across the hands and feet and we're going to hold downward dog for up to five slow breaths if we can perhaps you're still wanting to walk the dog and that's absolutely great absolutely fine to do that or perhaps holding your dog and focus on keeping the arms strong the weight across the hands and feet and of course the belly soft and breathing is relaxed three slow breaths if you can bearing in mind it's warm but knowing that this pose opens and energizes every major pretty much all the minor muscle groups but particularly the major muscle groups in the body and so also releasing any pent-up tension and down we come Ooh, lost. okay yeah it's well done again when you come down on all fours make sure you take a resting breath these are strong poses and it's warm so go gently now from there we're going to come to standing so we go back into downward dog we don't stay there we simply take a breath and then transition to standing by walking the feet towards the hands soft elbows soft knees and we rise up slowly watch my knees yogis i come up almost like a rag doll leisurely uncurling the spine looking down knees remain soft arms just dangling and very much rising slowly through my spine all the way to stand now when you do come up give yourself a moment simply to stand to gaze ahead and allow the body to relax perhaps even just getting a sip of water if you need to i hope you can see me because now we're going to go into what's known as a high lunge so it's a balance and a lunge I'm going to take my right foot forwards, make sure you can see my feet, and my left foot, I'm trying to turn my left foot, can you see, forwards. So both feet are facing forwards. So that's quite important. Both my left and right foot facing forwards, and my hands on my hips to steady me. Because in essence, although this is lunging and opening my hips, it also requires balance and effort and concentration. I'm going to bend my front knee, but can you see that my right knee is not coming over my right ankle? It's really important to keep that alignment strong. Now I need to go a little wider and then come up onto the ball of the back foot. Can you see that? I'm coming up onto the ball of the back foot. And because I want to integrate my upper body, just uh, moving the camera so you can see the upper body now, I clasp the hands behind me, interlace the fingers, and I pull down towards the earth as I sink down into that lunge variation. So I'm balancing, I'm lunging, I've clasped the hands together behind me, roll the shoulders back and look forwards. Wow, now I'm opening my hips, I'm strengthening my legs, I'm opening into my shoulder and my chest. So an awful lot going on here, and of course a balance as well. Gaze ahead and see if you can hold that for up to three slow breaths. Keep gently pulling those hands down towards the earth, further opening the shoulders. Make sure you're not straining, but a great way to get the stretch in the upper chest. Let's hold that for another deep breath in and out if we can, yogis. And to come out of it, release the hands back on the hips to steady us, picking the back foot up and coming forward. So we'll simply switch sides. Now it's not to be rushed because I think this is quite a deep stretch. So can you see now I've got my right foot behind, my left foot in front. I bend my left knee, but again, important to keep that knee in alignment with the ankle. And the tricky part is to try and turn the right foot so it's facing forwards and instantly we lose our balance. So we talk to the feet. We open the toes, keep the toes soft and long. Now slowly come up onto the ball of the back foot and sink. You're in a balance yogis. Interlace the fingers behind you, clasping the hands. Roll the shoulders back. Make sure you can see me again. I'm looking forwards. Can you see that? Looking forwards. Interlacing the fingers, gazing ahead. Trying to get that opening in the chest gently as well. 
feeling as if I'm squeezing an orange between the shoulder blades to, again, open the chest, try and rid the body of some of that tightness. Again, if you've been doing a lot of gardening or sitting at a desk today, just wanting to promote upper back health, mid back health today. And this balance, gazing ahead, focusing on that imaginary horizon. And aiming for two more deep breaths if you can. If you find it too wobbly, simply come back to standing feet together in Tadasana. Please don't strain. One more full breath in, and we will release and come forwards. Lovely work, Yogi, as well, to integrate that into something more for the upper body now, but still working the legs. We're going to do Warrior One variation. So here again, I take my right foot forwards and turn my left foot out. I've gone about double to hip width apart, if not a bit wider. Again, as I bend my right knee, I want to make sure that it's in alignment with the right ankle so this knee isn't loaded. I've turned the back heel out. And now so that you can see the upper body and how we integrate, I'm going to inhale, sweep my arms up. Can you see my arms there? And lunge a little deeper, looking forwards, palms are facing. I'm in my variation of warrior one. And I'm imagining someone pulling the arms up, but I've relaxed the shoulders away from the ears, so I'm not sort of punching up. Nice deep breaths as we gaze ahead, holding for five. Such a beautiful, strong pose that integrates upper and lower halves. A strong warrior, looking ahead, making clear decisions, but not needing any weapons to do so. And breathing into upper and lower half of our body. Such a fabulous way to get a whole body stretch. Why? Well, we're strengthening the legs and the upper body is reaching up, so we're lengthening the torso. And so your whole body is involved here. Gazing softly ahead, relax the jaw, relax the eyes, and if you can, aim to breathe through your nostrils so your mouth is always gently closed and less known structure otherwise. One more deep breath in and out, feel the power of the legs holding you up. And exhale, release the hands firstly, and step forwards, and again, switch sides. So this time, yogis, I've got my left foot forward, I've turned my right foot out, and my hips are square to the front. So I'm facing, my hips aren't twisted, they're facing that left leg. And as I bend the left knee, again, make sure it's in alignment with the left ankle. It's just worth getting that so correct, not putting the knees under any pressure. And of course, I'm turning the right heel out. Can you just see that as the people can see? Even though I'm wide, Demanding. I'm facing the front. Now I can integrate the arms, breathing in, raising both arms again, keeping the inner elbows in alignment with the inner ears, and I gaze up and I start to just really anchor my feet down. It's so important to feel the solidity of the legs and feet, so strong legs, strong feet. Then I can focus on reaching the arms up, but softening the shoulders, finding a point to focus on at eye level, Little bend a little further into the lunge if that's comfortable, but don't put your knee under any pressure and holding for four more deep breaths. Notice if you're left and right, do feel physically different in this pose, particularly your hips. Keep the hips parallel to the front, gazing softly ahead, and again enjoying that two way stretch. One more full breath in and out if you can. And we'll utilize the exhalation to release the arms and bring the legs together. Good work, okay. Well, we've actually got about four poses left, but we've got a good amount of time. So let's stay doing some, um, maybe five, six more minutes of standing work, coming up gently. So yeah, what we're going to do now it's just a couple of nice poses to open up the body. So let's go wide. I think a triangle would be nice today. Again, it helps to pick us up and give us energy. And let's face it, on a sunny day like this, we maybe hopefully feel a little bit more energized afterwards. So take your feet as wide as you can, yogis, as wide as is comfortable for your hips and legs. 
and make sure your toes and ankles are facing forwards. Toes and ankles forwards. Let's turn the right foot out 90 degrees. Left foot, could you keep it facing forwards for me? So if we could just see those feet again. Right foot is out to the 90 degree angle. Left foot is facing forwards and only as wide as you comfortably can. Now the legs are straight, we can integrate the arms. Let's take the arms to shoulder height. A quick look to make sure they're both level. Take a breath in. Enjoy reaching the right arm forwards and just below or above the knee joint, we want to place the hand, but not over the knee. So on top of the, the above the knee, I beg your pardon, or slightly below, but not pressing into the knee joint. Let's have a look at the left arm. That's pointing skywards with the palm facing forwards. And for today's purposes, rather than looking up because it's so warm, I'd like you to simply look ahead as I'm doing and hold that, keeping the front of the body open, keeping the legs straight if you can, holding for up to five deep breaths. So it is a strong pose, but the aim is to keep your body as open as you can. For those that want to work a little deeper, perhaps you can slide the hand further down. As you do that, remind yourself to keep the front of the body open. Otherwise, keep the hand just below the knee and breathe. Gazing ahead will just mean that the head and neck are relaxed as well. Let's go for two more breaths here if we can, yogis. But of course, you know your own bodies. If you're starting to feel this is a bit strong, then come up and relax. One more full breath in. Exhaling deeply there. And then on that next inhalation, that's when we put the micro bend in the front knee and we rise up slowly and we release. On a hot day like this, we just want to do the pose mindfully and we don't want to do too much too soon. You can get a great workout but doing it steadily at your pace when it's warm. Okay, let's go to the other side now. All I've done is so that you can see, my left foot now is pointing out 90 degrees, the right foot is pointing in. So I've simply switched sides, yogis. In your own time, take your arms to shoulder height, have a quick look to make sure they're level. Breathing in, let's reach to the left and the hand, the left hand just placing it below the knee or above the knee. Again, not pressing directly into that knee. Let's have a look at that right arm, pointing skywards with the palm facing forwards. And yes, have a quick look up, keep the whole arm in alignment, but then I want you to gaze ahead. And the reason I want you to do that today is A, it's warm and it's just a great way for releasing the neck. The legs are strong. We're trying to keep the front of the body open and we're breathing deeply. Let's hang out here for three more slow breaths. And again, just noticing that our left and right may feel different, of course. Nice, easy breathing. Again, you can come up a little earlier from the pose if it's feeling a bit strong. One more deep breath in and out. Let's inhale, come up slowly with care, and exhale to release. Good work, yogis. So we've got 20 minutes left. I'm going to do one more standing pose with you, and then we'll come down. Let's bring the legs together. What about a nice side bend? Always great to just integrate the sides of the body as well as the legs and the upper body. So we go wide again, as wide as you wish to. Toes and ankles facing forwards again. Turning the right foot out, and also this time turning the left foot in about 45 degrees. So turn the right foot out, turn the left foot in about 45 degrees. As I bend that right knee, I'm going to check again that it is in alignment with the ankle. I don't want to overload that right knee. I'm going to rest my right hand on my right thigh. And then I'm going to very carefully sweep the left arm behind me and pin it towards that ear again. Now there's a long line of energy running from my left foot all the way up to my left fingertips. I want to slowly rotate my chest towards the ceiling and gaze upwards if you can. Hold for four breaths. And what we're doing is creating space in our side ribs, accentuating that lengthening through the sides of the body today. I'm just making sure we're not straining. Ease off a little if it's feeling strong. 
Try to keep the front of the body again open by rotating your ribs and chest towards the sky. One more full breath if you can, yogis. And slowly coming up. Well done. A warm day, so take it easy. Let's pick the feet up and swivel them round to the other side. Again, I've got my left foot turned out, my right foot turned in. Bend that front knee and check it's in alignment with the ankle. And then carefully rest the forearm with the palm facing uppermost on the left thigh. Integrating the opposite arm by breathing in, I sweep the right arm up, pinning it towards the ear. And then trying to rotate the chest sky upwards as I gaze towards the ceiling. Long line of energy from the right heel up to these right fingertips now. Keep the front of the body open. Breathing into those side ribs. And hold for three more breaths. When you're ready, slowly start to inhale and raise the arm, come out of the pose. Get good work. Well, I said we do at least 20 minutes, 15 minutes on the floor, so let's bring the feet together for a moment. Toes and ankles facing forwards. And then if you can see me, I'm going to roll the shoulders back. And simply allow my arms just a moment here. Take a deep breath. Have a little sip of water if you need to. Make sure you stay hydrated throughout the practice. And then when you're ready, we'll come back down onto our mats. And we're going to do a little bit of work here on the floor. So I said we were doing some back bends today. So what we're going to do is come into Sphinx pose. We're going to lie on our bellies. And we're going to come up onto our forearms, elbows, under our shoulders, hands and forearms about shoulder width apart. We're going to reach back through the legs to lengthen the spine forwards. We want to ground the tops of the feet down into the mat, into the floor. I'm pressing my forearms down and pull them back. I press my forearms down and try to pull them back. That helps to open my palm. I can slide the shoulder blades. Down my back and press them in. And I'm curling my back body into the front body. And we hold for eight breaths. Gazing ahead gently. Chin slightly tucked in. Looking ahead. And gently holding that. So I'm pressing the forearms down. Grounding the tops of the feet down, trying to relax the buttocks, soften the buttocks if you can. Opening the heart. Curling the back body almost as if it could curl into the front body. Hold for five breaths. If you find this is too strong, then you can always just make a pillow with your hands and just rest your head on your forearms if you need to. Otherwise, just relaxing into it, hold for three deep breaths. Really promotes upper back health, chest expanding, lovely back bending. And we always just feel a little more receptive to all that our life has to offer. Encouraging that soft receptivity in the front part of the body, as well as strengthening our back muscles. Okay, that's enough. Let's inhale and let's make a pillow with our hands and rest our forehead on our hands or forearms. Bring the big toes together, let the heels fall out. And gently let your back muscles relax here. Just take five resting breaths here. Let the back body soften and release. And that last pose, Sphinx pose, is really good if you find back bends quite challenging, but you'd still like to practice a back bend. The Sphinx pose can be held for as long as you comfortably can, as many times as you can throughout the day, to promote upper and mid back health. 
It's also very good for the neck. Make sure you rest here for one or two more deep breaths. Just giving the spine a moment to rest and pause. And of course, to come back to your breathing. Okay, ladies. So now we're going to just practice what we know as the half frog pose. And we're going to do this gently. The next two poses are a little bit stronger. What time is it? Yes, I can't see the clock. Okay, we've got about 15 minutes. So plenty of time to take these two back ends carefully and slowly. So frog pose, we're going to, if you can see, I'm going to leave my left forearm here, taking it slightly forwards. And I'm going to almost lift back into Sphinx pose, but then I'm going to bend my right knee. Now, for some of us, that will be enough of a stretch. But if you can, I'd like you to have a go at reaching back with your right hand and gently press the foot down towards the outside of the hip or towards the buttock. We're trying to keep the, the, the foot close to the buttock. I'm trying to draw my left waist back to keep the torso even. Hold for four breaths. Quite a deep stretch. So even if you just manage one or two deep breaths, that's great. Pressing the forearm down, trying to keep the chest even, torso particularly, looking ahead. Hold and breathe for several breaths. And that really works those strong quadricep muscles, the thigh muscles. And then we release. We're going to change sides. This time I'm bending the left knee. Reaching back if I can with my left hand, trying to press the foot down, the foot close to the buttock if I can. And again, trying to lengthen the tailbone back, drawing my right waist back now, trying to lift the torso but keep it even, staying for three slow breaths if you can. Do release before then if you need to. Such a strong stretch in our thighs, but again, isolating those areas that get tight. One more deep breath in and out, and we can release. Oh, good work. And we've got plenty of time left, so we're going to try Bhujangasana, which is cobra pose. So another lovely back bend that we want to soften the front of the body, and yet that softness, we want to integrate it with the strength of our back muscles, okay? So taking care here. We'll begin in what we call a low cobra. I'm placing my hands by my ribs and lengthening the torso forwards. So I'm sort of looking forwards and up. And then I'm going to firm the back body in and keeping both thighs um, grounded, front of the feet and the thighs grounding down. I'm trying to drive my hands down, yogis, and if possible, straighten my arms into full cobra. Now, if you can't do the full cobra, soft elbows, you may just be in a low cobra here, which is absolutely fine because you're trying to coil your chest almost into your um, spine, you're trying to widen the upper back into almost like a cobra hood. And then we're going to take eight deep breaths. So I'm in full cobra or a low cobra. Breathe and hold for four breaths. Anchoring down the feet, this is a strong pose, so don't strain. Now on our last exhalation, we're going to stick the tongue out and hiss with joy. And then we roll down slowly. And then rather than stay there, we're going to counterpose that by pushing back up, nice and slowly. Perhaps grabbing our blocks or our cushions if we want to, knees together and coming into the counter pose of pose of child. So forehead down, arms by my sides, dropping the shoulders. You can see my palms facing uppermost. Do separate the knees if more comfortable. And I want you to hang out here for at least five long breaths so that the whole back of the body, which is making this dome shape, is encouraged to rest and allow the muscles in the back to soften and relax for a moment. 
five slow breaths here, please. Just enjoy five long breaths. Do drop the shoulders if you can away from the ears and breathe light and softness into the air. Breathe light and softness into your mouth. Feeling aware of any sensations in your spine. Okay, let's enjoy another deep breath in and out together. And slowly come back. Give yourself a moment when you come up here, yeah, it's just to quietly sit. Make sure you feel comfortable. And do grab a little sip of water if you need to. Okay, we're going to move on. We've got just under 10 minutes, so a couple of nice poses just to end with. So what I'd like us to do is a spinal twist now. And we're going to do a seated one for this. So I'm going to sit on my block. I often find seated work on the block is just a great way to keep the spine tall. But if you've got a cushion, grab that. If you haven't and you're happy just to sit on the floor, that's fine. Now what I've done is I've bent my left knee. And I bring the heel of the left foot as close to the outer right buttock as I can. With my right leg, it comes across and over, and just resting that right foot on the outside of the left knee. Okay, so this is quite good for opening our hips and our knee joints, which can be quite tight. But we're going to do a twist. So I'm going to take my right hand behind me and form a tripod with the fingers. And with my left arm, I'm simply going to hug that in, wrap it around the right knee, and gently twist to my right. So I'm looking over my right shoulder, hugging that knee close to the chest, aiming to look somewhere over the right shoulder carefully, and holding for at least four slow breaths. So what we're doing is not only twisting, we're opening up into our outer hips and knee joints, Sitting on a block just enables you to keep the spine taller. Let's go for two more deep breaths here. I'm going to inhale. And as we exhale, we come back to the center. And we're going to slowly relax and release the legs. Stretching them out for a moment, just give them a little stretch, we've got the time, and then we'll try that on the other side. So this time, bending the knees, but it's my right foot that goes underneath, pretty much to the outside of the left hip if it can. Left leg comes across, and again, trying to keep it to the outside of the right knee. Looking forward so we can sit tall with the aid of the block here or the cushion. And we're going to hug with the right arm, wrap around arm, around the outside of that left knee to keep it in place. Left arm goes behind me, forming a tripod. I'm turning to look over the left shoulder. And the aim here is to aim to keep the spine as tall as you comfortably can, twisting from the low bend. And do make sure that you're not straining. Let's aim for four slow breaths. And helping the spine, just releasing the spine, any pressure, any tension, bringing the tension out of the spine. Breathing deeply, just sitting as tall as you comfortably can, keeping that spine tall. Okay, for one more full breath in and out, here, please. In together, and we're going to exhale and slowly come back to the center. 
And again, just being careful to stretch the legs out. Now I would recommend staying on your cushion and block for the last pose. We're going to straighten the legs out and just go back into the um, hips again. I'll straighten the legs out. Then I'm going to bend the knees and bring the soles of the feet together. So Badakanasana will be our last pose. Again, another pose to open the hips, the groin area, many of us are tight there, into the knees. And then taking the hands either side of the feet and opening the soles of the feet like the pages of the book. So inner elbows resting if they can on the inner thighs, keeping the feet open like the pages of the book and dropping the head, relaxing the body. So just don't like shape again with making with a smile. Chin tucked in, eyes closed, holding the feet open like the pages of a book. Now that makes that groin opening a lot tighter to take care. Closing the eyes and just taking four slow breaths if you can. So an area that's pretty disregarded as well, and that's the groin. All the way down to the inner ankle, you're stretching as well as the outer knees and hips. Now, make sure you don't go too deep here, but do stay if you can comfortably for another two slow breaths. Drop the shoulders. Softening into it as best you can. And then let's close the feet, hand underneath either knee, and carefully bring the knees together. And once more, straighten the legs. It's quite a deep stretch. Let's lie down for a few minutes. It's very warm, and our bodies will very much appreciate a few minutes' rest. So you could use your block underneath your head or a cushion if you prefer. And however you lie, make sure you're coming into your resting pose comfortably. So if you've got low back issues, I recommend bringing the knees together, keeping the knees together, but the feet are wider apart and pushing down on the low back. That can be extremely comfortable for those of us with low back pain or extending the legs. Letting the heels fall out. And then a little tip is just to raise the head and look down and make sure the body's in a relatively straight line. Head goes down, chin tucked in. Let's turn the palms up and those. We're going to rest in Shavasana. Rest in corpse pose for a couple of minutes. And we can close the eyes and mouth yogis. We can start to acknowledge that this is our quiet time, our resting time. Back of the body has the support of the floor. The front of the body open and receptive. And just take a moment to observe any sensations, particularly in the areas we open today, mid and upper back, our neck, the front of the chest and shoulders. And equally being aware of any other parts of your body that feel physically different now. Just being aware of all and any physical sensations as you close your eyes and enjoy the stillness of the body, allowing the breath to rest. The whole body quiet and still, apart from the movement of the breath, the whole body resting in Shavasana. Now go on with this practice for a few more minutes if you've got time, yogis. Five or even ten minutes rest is recommended after a yoga practice. And then join us again, if you can, at two for meditation or 2.15 for our Q&A and coffee session. If not, have a wonderful day, rest well and enjoy the weather. Stay safe. I